Let's take a look at what we have done so far. Four weeks ago, we started JavaScript. We did introduction to JavaScript, we did control statements, control statements, and JavaScript functions. Three weeks ago, we covered JavaScript arrays and JavaScript objects and the DOM. Two weeks ago, we covered events and XML. Tonight, we're going to be covering AJAX and web servers. Up to this point, you guys should know very well HTML, cascading style sheets, JavaScript, and tonight, you, I'm going to show you how to use JavaScript asynchronously and how to actually deploy it in a web server. Up to tonight, you guys are able to produce a static web site. Totally. Okay? Your nine page website. I'm not asking you for the Ajax piece. And we will be covering how to download and install a database. Create a database, create tables, and populate data in those tables so that you can produce your database for the following week, next five weeks. Is that clear? So what is Ajax then? Very well. It uses JavaScript. AJAX stands for Asynchronous JavaScript and XML. So let's take a look at the different pieces. You know what an XML file looks like, correct? It has to be well formed. It has, it has to come from either a data dictionary or a schema, correct? That conforms, the tags conforms to that schema or specification. You guys know JavaScript, correct? JavaScript is a language, it's a scripting language that allows you to run locally on the, on the browser and it has all these different objects like date, like document, like, like window and all these different methods, etc. Now, how can we combine JavaScript, which is a very powerful scripting language, with XML so that we can have data Remember, XML is used to represent data and be able to communicate with a server. Not only that, not only communicating on a regular basis, because that's what browsers do, they communicate with the server. But guess what? If the server has a hell of a time trying to produce the HTML that is going to respond back, the browser will just spin and spin. And have you guys had any experience like that on websites? They just, the browser spins and spins and never comes back. That's the key part of AJAX. It's asynchronous. What does that mean? That is not synchronous. Yeah, very well. <laughs> but but what does that mean? <coughs> it does not wait. It does not wait. It will pop a request to the server and it will keep doing its thing locally running, processing, whatever it has to, and it does not wait for the server to answer. But it has to tell the server, when you are done, you're going to notify me the following way. So the AJAX call will require from you to produce code that will run when the server notifies the JavaScript, hey, I'm done. Okay? So that's the really neat part of the AJAX, that it's asynchronous. Now, that means that applications will run smoother and quicker, at least to the, to the eye of the, u of the user. Okay? And in fact, the use of AJAX heavily on websites, it's what today it's called a Web 2.0 website. Have you guys heard the term Web 2.0? It's when a website behaves almost like an application that you have installed locally on your computer, either through a DVD or CD or whatever. 
okay? And that's the idea that the users of a web application will have the same experience, user-friendly experience, as a standalone application install on your computer. So have you guys, have you guys, any of you guys used, I don't know, Hotmail or Live.com or any one of those, or, or Google, any one of those email um, websites, you can actually do really cool stuff. You can click, drag, drop, you can answer emails, all that in within one page. One page. Okay? You don't have to be refreshing stuff. And, and it's all constant asynchronous communication between your browser and the server. Okay? So, let's try our first example. Let's Ajax change this text. This is the code and this is the result, right? Now, to accomplish Ajax, all browsers, well, by all browsers I mean IE7+, Plus, Firefox, Chrome, Opera, and Safari, okay? They have in them, embedded in them, an object called the XML HTTP request object. This is the object that is going to let you do asynchronous requests to any server. Okay? For those of you who would like to produce a web application, an Ajax compliant web application for old browsers like IE5 or IE6, you will have to download an ActiveX object from Microsoft and install it and it's called the Microsoft XML HTTP. Nowadays, it's less common that users have the IE5 or the IE6. So I wouldn't worry so much about this. But when you produce an Ajax website, you have to keep track of the different versions of the browser that you, you're going to be able to provide functionality uh, for. So in this case, if it's i7, Firefox, Chrome, Chrome, Opera, or Safari, you're going to be able to do something like this, new XML HTTP request. Okay? <coughs> now, when you say if window.xml HTTP request, what you're doing there is you're asking whether your browser contains that object or not. If it does contain, you're going to produce a new instance of that. Everybody clear on that? Okay. Now, what do we do with this object? This object has a property. And the property is called unready state change. This property is the property that gets notified by the server when it's done. And in fact, it will contain the code that it will run when the server notifies the browser that it's done. The unready state change. And what are you doing here? You're actually passing a function to it. A whole function. You guys remember when I said JavaScript is a very powerful scripting language? Because not only you can pass this parameter, integers and strings, you can also pass objects like dates and an XML object. Not only that, you can also pass code. I mean, you can have a variable that accepts not an object or a value, but code, a piece of code, JavaScript code. And this is the perfect example. On ready state change is a property of the XML HTTP request object that accepts JavaScript code. In this case, what are we passing to it? A function. It's what it's called a nameless function. Notice that it doesn't have a name. It just says function, no parameters, open and close. So what are you doing there? You ask the object, hey, is your ready state equal 4 and is your status 200? What does that mean? 
Anybody familiar with the 200? Anybody familiar with the 404? Have you gone to a database, I mean, to a website where you got a 404? That means the server is saying, you know what, I have no idea what document you're asking. I don't have that. Okay? I don't know if you guys have gotten any 500s. Sometimes you go to a website and you get a 500. That means the server is really messed up. Something is wrong with that server. Okay? When you get a 200, means I was able to um, reply, your, um, fulfill your request. That's what it means. I was able to fulfill your request. So it knows what document it is, and it was successfully being able to send it through the pipe to to the browser. Okay? So that's what we're looking for. We're looking for a response from the server that says status is 200. The status. Now, what does it mean, the ready state? So... If we take a look at the ready, I'm sorry, ready state. This is the ready state. The ready state is a property of the XML HTTP request object that keeps track of what stage of the request is in. Zero means request is not even initialized. One means the server connection has been established. Two means the request has been received. Three means I'm processing it four means the request is finished and the response is ready. So all this time the object is asynchronous checking the status okay, and updating the ready state property. So what you really want to do is you want to make sure that first of all your ready state is at state 4, right? and then the status from the server is everything went okay 200 when you got that when you got ready state 4 and status 200 then you can say okay I have my answer from the server so what do you do you ask that object the XML HTTP request object to give you the response text this response text and this is very important can be XML, HTML, JSON. JSON stands for JavaScript Object Notation, and we're going to see samples of that. It can be a web service. It can be anything. Okay, it's just response text. And you can before you do the before you open the connection and you do the request, you can tell the server. By the way give me the answer in XML format or give me the answer in JSON format and that's what the response text is going to get back to you if you don't specify the format it will default to what does web server respond by default HTML remember web servers respond HTML by default in fact, that's what browsers get back when they ask something. Okay? So, this, all this stuff is going to happen. All this stuff, all this code is going to happen. Oh, I haven't, I haven't finished. Okay. So, you're going to tell that object to give you the response text. What are you going to do with that response text? Well, depending on what type you're expecting back, but in this case, it seems that it's expecting back HTML then what are you going to do? You're going to tell the document, that's the page, right? Hey, get me an element in the page that is called my div. And then put inside that div, as an in inner HTML, put inside that div whatever I get back as the response. Okay? So all this function is going to be executed when the server is done with my request. But I haven't done any request yet. How do I do a request? The request is done two, in two steps. The first step is you have to open the connection with the server. Okay? 
when you open the connection with the server there are two types of requests that you can produce from a server you can produce a get or a post does anybody know the difference what is the difference exactly but it started the way that he just mentioned it. Typically, when you do a get, you're trying to get a document back. However, sometimes it's necessary to tell the server exactly what kind of document we want. So we have to pass parameters. In a get, the parameters will show up in the URL. So just to give you an example, you just put in, in the URL domain name, nova.edu slash documents slash ask then you put a question mark so you're asking for the file ask and then you put a question mark and then you put name value pairs of the parameters that you're asking for so in this case you can put in doc equals grades so you're passing a parameter called doc and the value of that parameter is grades so you can see in a get all the parameters being passed to the server. In a post, you won't be able to do that. You won't be able to see the parameter. They're hidden. They're sent through a form. In a post, typically you are asking information from the user, and you're taking those in a in a form and sending them to the to the browse. I mean to the server. Okay. Yes. <coughs> Remember, this is HTTP. Can anybody tell me what are the connection settings for HTTP? Okay. What does HTTP stand for? Transfer protocol. It's a protocol, which means somewhere out there, there's got to be a server running a program. Typically, it's called a service running a program listening through port 80 HTTP is a protocol that will listen through port 80 by default doesn't necessarily have to be set to 80 in fact when you develop and you will see this in, in when we go into um, Eclipse when we develop sometimes developers decide to make their servers listen through port 8080 or 8888. You can pick whatever port. This program is running on this computer connected to the internet and listening for any requests that it comes to it through that port. So do we need a connection? All we need to know that it's HTTP and that it's port 80. That's it. So, what are we going to open here? We're going to open the connection to the to the server and it's going to be what type of request? A get. Okay? And what am I requesting? I'm requesting for a document called ajaxinfo.txt. I'm actually asking for text. And then I'm going to say yes. I want it to be asynchronous. That means that I don't want to have to wait for you to get me the answer. I'll keep running my stuff and then you will notify me. So this means true, asynchronous. Okay? And then what do you do? You send that request. So, at this point, what does this page look like? This page looks like we have a body. Inside we have a div called my div, right? What does my div show right now? You show a heading two that says let Ajax change this text. Correct? Then I have a button that shows in its face change content. Correct? And in the unclick, I just call load XML doc, which is this function. 
this function is in charge of creating the XML HTTP request, creating the function that will get executed when it gets responded back, creating the connection, and sending it. Okay, so let's execute this. Did you guys see what happened? The whole content of the page changed without any refresh whatsoever. Did my page refresh at all? No. And in fact, look what happened. I am in w3schools.com. I am in the Ajax folder and I'm asking for a try it that ASP. Does anybody know what ASP stands for? Correct. It's Microsoft Technology. Okay? It's the equivalent of what you guys are going to be learning here in PHP. Microsoft has their own. And active server pages could be in VB script, JavaScript. I mean, sorry, C++, not, not C++, C Sharp, VB, uh, what else, J Sharp, <coughs> any one of those languages. If you're proficient in any one of those languages, you can create an active server page. Okay? PHP is very particular, in which it has to be PHP. That's it. So, what am I asking from this guy? I'm asking for this document. And I apologize. I don't know why it's, you know, all those things. It's trying to, like, um, I think it's trying to, um, to correct them, right? It doesn't understand these concepts, so it's trying to correct them. Yeah, see? It thinks that this means frequent test, and so I have to add it to a dictionary. Anyway, but what I'm asking is for Ajax info.txt, correct? So if I go into W3Schools Ajax folder and I ask for that file, This is a real file in W3 School Server. In fact, this file contains that. What is that? That's the same content. That's the same content that got displayed here. Like this. Now, this content, I want to change it. What can I do? How can I change this content? Change that file. Can I do that? Yes or no? Yes or no? You have to be webmaster of this W3 schools. In other words, you have to have access to the machine where there's this program listening through port 80, right? And then going to the root of that program and going to the folder called Ajax and find that file, open an editor, and modify it. Not everybody can do that. You can set up the server so that people can do that. Not a very good idea, especially with so many spammers and hackers out there. <coughs> and in fact, tonight we're going to see an example of what happened at Dytel's um, website. Dytel has all these samples that, that you and I are going to see tonight in their web server so that people can try it. And people have messed that up. Because you have to provide, you have to give certain rights to, to, um, to the user so they can see the functionality. Unfortunately, those rights also mean that they can mess it up. <coughs> so that's a good question. I mean, that's a good answer.
you have to be the webmaster to be able to change that but what is really important here is that you did not have to refresh the page when you wanted to get that content there all you had to do was click the button and without refreshing the entire page you got that content that's what Ajax is all about okay so now let's move on quickly into the titles examples so we can answer Antonio's question the first example is called the switch content okay and if you guys read on the book it says that when you hove over one of these you should be able to get different content it's not happening so I'm going to go into the switch content HTML and I'm going to analyze it so I, these, I see these six images, correct? see the six images? they come from the images folder and each one is a cover of a book, I guess, right? when I mouse over the first one I get to execute the JavaScript called get content and I pass an HTML in fact that HTML is in here it's this HTML which I'm going to look at looks like a very simple HTML right? what do you have in there? C++ how to program 6th edition this is what the book is about and blah 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 that's it Okay. so I go back to switch content so I'm going to execute get content with this HTML so let's go to get content get content I pass a URL same thing that we went through the first example we create the XML HTTP request we tell it to on ready state change pass the state change you guys see this? this is another way of providing the code you say hey on ready state change pass state change and state change is a named function Okay so I could pass an unnamed what's called anonymous function or I can pass a name of a function and same thing I open the connection it's a get to that URL and it's a true asynchronously and then I send it okay so what does state change have to do same deal you test for ready state 4 and for status 200 when that happens, what are you going to do? You're going to tell the document to get to a tag called content area. Where is content area? Where is content area? Here it is. It's a div called content area. What do I have in there? A space initially. Right? So I'm going to get that and in the inner HTML I'm going to put the response from the Ajax. Got it? So I know that I'm going to be getting HTML by default. Now, when I mouse out, which means I'm out of the image, I'm going to be executing clear content. In clear content, all it does is tell the document to get you that content area and in the inner HTML you put nothing so it gives you the impression that you just wiped it out what's the problem with this?
That's what your question was, right? Okay, let's backtrack for a second. Can anybody tell me what's in my URL in my browser right now? It's a file. It's a file. Is it an HTTP request? No. XML HTTP request. What does that tell you? It needs the server to communicate. It will not do any queries for you if you're trying the file. Now all this time, the last seven weeks, you guys have been turning to me a folder with HTML pages, images, JavaScript, Cascading Style Sheets. I just go in there, double click, it's an HTML page, right? So it loads the browser, it renders it. However, for HTML, XML, HTTP requests to work, the request has to come, I mean, the request has to be done to a web server, and the response has to come from a server. When you have in the URL, file colon, front slash, front slash, front slash, that means it's the Windows file system. It's not an HTTP request. From here on, we are going to have to work with a web server one web server where we can actually do HTTP request to. Okay? So no more of this loading it from the file system. So how do we make this work? Well first of all I need you to understand how it's working. So I'm going to erase the whole file thing and I'm going to go to Dietel. And this is, if you guys look at what it says in the book, it says, you want to try this? You won't work locally on your computer. You need to go to the following URL. And it actually gives you a URL that t starts with test.dietel.com. And in this case, it's called Examples IW3HTP4 because that's the name of the book, right? It's uh, Internet World Wide Web How to Program 4th Edition. AJAX folder, figure 1505, which is the figure in the book where the content, I where the HTML uh, code is, and then it's called Switch Content HTML. It didn't look much different than what you were looking at, but believe me, it's different now. This is live, oops. This is Ajax calls to the server real time. So you are displaying the HTML pages that you asked for. Any questions? Let's move on to the next example. You guys know it's not going to work. So, might as well just go through the code. It's called pull images onto the page. Okay? And basically, what it does, it gives you radio buttons. When you click on the All Books radio button, there is an all.xml file that gets sent to you. And in JavaScript, you're going to parse through that XML and produce a table of images. You want to see it live? What is it? Test, detail examples
this is 1508, right? This is the real thing. Notice what happens when I click on all books. Notice what happens when I click on simply books. On how to program books. Now let's dissect it. Let's take a look at the all XML. What do you guys see? Covers. Cover, 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 cover. Each cover has an image title. Image title. Right? How many do we have here? I counted 12. Counting one more. <laughs> I mean, one less. It's 13. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Yes. Yes, there are 11 covers. You guys see that? And there are 11 covers there. Okay, so how are we producing that out of an XML? The answer is in the actual pool images onto page HTML. When I click on the radio button all, the on click will take me to an, a JavaScript called get images, and I pass that XML name the next ML name, right? So if I go into get images, this is it. Pass the name of the XML, create your HTTP request. On ready stage, you're just going to do process response and we're going to get to that in a few minutes. It's going to be a get of that XML. And then you just send it. So the big piece of the functionality is going to be on this JavaScript, obviously. You would expect that. What does process response do when you get the XML back from the server? On 4 and on 200, you're just going to clear the table. And clear the table, basically what it does, it tells the document to get covers, and you wipe out the inner HTML of covers. Who is covers? covers is this div. Right? So that's what clear table does. And then what do you do? Look at this. This is pretty neat. You take that object, which is the X XHTML request object, and now you do not take the response as text. Remember before we were saying dot response text. Why don't we do that? Because we know we're expecting an XML back. In fact, I'm doing a get of that URL. And that URL is either one of these. This XML, this XML, this XML. You want to see it? Let's ask for it. Raw. That is the XML, which is the exact same thing that we were looking at in my notepad. So now what you do is you take the response XML, and then you get elements by tag name. So you are getting in here, notice that there's a, an, in, an embedded parser of an XML file. This object is pretty cool. I mean, this object is pretty big. 
it knows how to parse XML and JSON and web services and all this stuff. In this case, it's parsing XML because when you get the response in XML, you can tell it to get all the elements by tag cover and it's going to give it to you under one variable called covers. Okay? And then you get the element called base URL. So if you guys look at it, it's giving you this value and all these covers as an array. You didn't even have to move a finger to do that. It already does that for you. Then, you're going to ask the document to give you the tag called covers. That's going to be your output. And you create a table, and you create a t-body, right? You guys are familiar already with these, document create element table, document create element t-body, document create a table row. And basically all you're doing is creating a table with table rows, with table data, and inside each table data you're creating an image. And where is the image information coming from? From the array that was produced by getting the XML parsed. That's it. So if you go through the code right here, you will see that all this stuff, and, and you can change, if you want to change how many images go, well in this case it won't work because it's locally. But if you want it to change to only two per row, then you just change that here. Okay? That's basically it. So you are getting XML back, and then you're parsing that XML by saying response XML. You're parsing it and you're getting, in this case you're querying it. Get all the elements by tag name cover. And it automatically gives you uh, an array. Okay? So we've seen an asynchronous request of, H of HTML. We've seen an asynchronous request of XML. Let's take a break and then we're going to see an asynchronous request of JSON and how to download HTTP, uh, the Apache web server and make all this stuff work locally on my computer so I don't have to rely on Dytil's web server.